the name of the podcast is Cities of Blood, so I gotta ask you some gruesome stuff. Now, I interviewed you a few years ago uh, for the Death of Del Paso project, and I remember you telling me about uh, a particular next door neighbor you had growing up. Oh my goodness. His name was Goober. Oh gosh. And he was part of the KKK. Now, a lot of people don't know that they existed in Del Paso Heights a very long time. There were many families. And uh, and they were very strict about, you know, who came into their neighborhoods. And, of course, when we moved in, they were already in their 70s. So um, they were very, um, how can I say, controlling. So the good thing is when we lived, there was a little bit of land between the homes, but they still made it clear to us. Uh, they would tell us, when you walk down the street, if you're coming by, by my house, make sure you walk in the middle of the street. You're not allowed to be near our homes. Um, they had fencing, and so one of them had their grandkids out there. And As I was walking by, the little girl, she was like maybe five years old, would come up to the fence and say, hi, wanted to talk to me, as I was walking in the middle of the street to go catch yeah. my bus. And so I said, hi. I turned and I said, hi, and the grandfather just came running out. You don't talk to my granddaughter. You don't say anything. Just keep walking. And so those are the kind of things that we had to live with. Now, Goober, once a month, would have his cross burning in the backyard. And so... Wait, oh, I got to stop. What, what, around what year is this? This is, this is probably about 66, 67. So late 60s. But this is yes. here in North Sacramento. Oh, right? yes. Right. This is right in Del Paso Heights. Uh, and so he would tell us... You know, it's it's my monthly meeting. You guys know that you got to stay inside the house. So you don't come out. So we, all of us, you know, there's four of us kids, and my mom and dad. And so we would go in the house, close the curtains. We'd see the cars driving up. We'd see the CHP uh, motorcyclists driving up, coming up, and parking. Oh yeah, CHP so officers. Wow. And uh, and then they they go in the backyard. And so we were able to peek from the window. We would see the cross being put up, and then all of a sudden it's lit, and then they're outside, you know, around it, having their once a meeting. month. Once a month, we knew well, once a month. <laughs> now are they all in white hoods? Or? Oh yeah, yeah, no, no yeah. And they had, some of them had some red, something red in the front. Right. So I don't know what that was, but we didn't understand what that was. We just figured, well, it's their religion, I guess. They never did anything to us, but. Yeah. Uh, so there was it was it was crazy. Still, okay. now, this, now, this isn't Mississippi or anything. Right this now, is California. So, now your parents are from California, or are they? My parents are from Mexico. Oh, they came from Mexico. They came from Mexico uh, seeking the job. My my father was construction, so he was always labor. You know, yeah, labor. So he was, and during that time, it, there was construction happening. In, right. You know, Sacramento. A lot so, of growth. So he followed and, that. My mother didn't have the language yet so she was cleaning house because she was referred by the church so she cleaned houses okay. and uh and she never drove so she always had to take the bus and so you know that's why i said we would walk in the middle of the street to go get the bus so your first generation californian yes, first i was born we were born my sister and i was in el paso texas okay so we, we were citizens so we came over here and and you know just tried to do the best but i have to tell you my very first experience and i was I was six years, I think, let me see, about six years old, and we moved into Del Paso Heights, and yeah. um, and I saw this little young, this boy standing in the corner, and he he was an African-American boy. I never had seen an African-American boy <laughs> at the time, black boy, yeah. and I, I ran in the house, and I says, Mom, Mom, there's a little boy in the corner, and he's all burnt up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And I, I was terrified, and, and so my mother, you know, laughed at me, of course, and came out, and she saw, and she goes, oh, no, 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 that's, she says, that's a black little boy, and I go, well, I know he's black, but he's burnt. He goes, no, 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 and so she had to explain to me, that's the way he is, that's his color, he's a black boy. Yeah. And I said, okay, and after that, because we had just moved in. Right. So then eventually we, she set us up to go to school. When I got to school, I saw other you know, black boys in our class. And so I was like, okay, I yeah. guess there's, they're different. But I had not. That was your first experience, experience ever. <laughs> it was, and it that's was, the only way your mind could, could yeah, wrap your head around yeah. it was to think that, that he was burnt. Uh, because we, we were never exposed to that coming from Texas, you yeah. know, uh, the part that we lived yeah. at. I, 
didn't have that experience. But anyways, um, so yes, so Goober right next door with all his family, they would do that, and we never spoke until in the 1980s, I think, uh, yeah, it was in the 80s, um, probably about 1979, 1980, yeah. and he was sitting outside his uh, house, and I was walking by, and I started to walk in the middle of the street, and he called me over. He was sitting there, and so I walked over to him, and, and I never had spoken to him, and but I knew that I had to uh, respond to him, because that's the way we were. Mm-hmm. And so I walked over to him, and I said, yes, and he, and he said, girl, come here. You know, I want to tell you something. You and your family have been very good to be very respectful and, and doing what we said. But I just want to tell you something, and I appreciate that. I want to tell you I'm very sorry if we if we offended you or if we did anything to hurt your feelings, but I apologize. And now I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be leaving, and I'm not coming back. I'm leaving soon. Do you understand? And I said, yes. And I said, okay, so go about your business, and just you tell your mom and daddy that I said, I'm sorry, okay? And I said, okay. Didn't know what that was about, so I left. Three, he left three days later. I didn't see him after that. Three days later, he died. Wow. Hmm. He had cancer, and I never knew. So he knew he was going. So he was. And this was it, the last regrets of a lifelong racist. Right. And that's how he let, ended his life. But he never did bother us. Never, you know. But like, he, but he, he wanted to apologize at, yes. the, at the end. He felt that was important. Which, um, it's a powerful thing coming from somebody who's obviously demonstrated their hate for so many years. For eighty years. No, he said that was around seventy nine or eighty. How long did those monthly meetings he had with the crosses go on for? Oh my gosh! I think because we would. I, I think my parents would stay up, literally stay up and wait until it was over. Yeah. And uh, I think that, that at one time, I think I tried to stay up just to watch. Uh, you know how kids are, you're curious. And, yeah. and I want to say maybe it would be on 11 o'clock. Um, after that, I think I just kind of passed out. But um, the, my parents would stay up and watch just in case they decided to come over and knock on their door. What was, the, what was the last year you remember it happening? Was it into the 70s? No, I want to say it was into the, tonight. That like, keeps the thinking 1980. Really? Right yeah. around 1980. Yeah. Or 80. Yeah. I mean, ended it around the time he died? Uh, before. Before he before died? Before he died. Okay. Yeah, before he died. So still, that's 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 a monthly cross burning here in North Sacramento all throughout the 1970s almost. Basically 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was still there. And, uh, and like I said, there, there were at least one, two, three, four... Five or six families on the street they were all part of that wow and they would have and they would you could see they had it on their post on their mailbox they had uh, there was one lady on the corner that, that passed away and as soon as she passed away because she only had a son uh, and he was not you know he, he had disabilities they came and took him away but and as soon as that happened um, they ran somebody just went in and ransacked the home just tore it up. It was a really beautiful little house, but they just ransacked it terribly. And and my mother had come, was coming home, and and that how I found out is because she was holding this eagle, this glass crystal eagle. She said that she picked up that was tossed in the grass near the where the. She goes, oh, the house is a mess. Somebody's broken in, and oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. But she had picked up this big eagle that was a Nazi, you know. No way. Yes. Yes. Oh wow! And, and it was it crystal. Home. It was crystal, yeah. And I Holy and crap. it was it was just beautiful. It was a big crystal eagle, and I'll never forget that. But it was like sitting on a Schwab sticker. Yeah, basically. they had they had, and wow. uh, and she goes, well, that's part of the the families, you know, that were here and and yeah. So there, we had a lot of that, in the, and that was just on one street. So who knows what yeah. was so now on with the, other the with the other houses? I mean, I, did. Did you make? Did they say the same thing? Like you need to walk on the street. Oh yeah, all of them Everybody say the same was, thing. Yeah, because they all they all were you know. But was he was or, the goober? He was sort of like the leader of the street. Yeah, he was the one. He was the, the one. grand yeah, wizard. He was the main. He was the main guy that 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 set up the meetings and told the rest. You know, because the guy that was lived across the street, he was a ch a retired CHP officer. Wow. Yeah. So but he was also in the clan. Oh yeah, yeah. 
That doesn't surprise no. me. I've heard a lot of, especially back in the day, cops being also clan members. Well, it's yeah. like I think when we talked about uh, the one who murdered all the hookers in uh, Oak Park, I said my image of all the cops are them oh. in Wranglers, cowboy boots, chew a cigarette, and aviator glasses, and probably their hidden KKK sticker somewhere. Although I have to say that um, one time my aunt, uh, again, she also hadn't driven, she didn't learn how to drive yet, and she was walking home because, like I said, we would take the bus, and she came home, and she had gotten all beat up. She had gotten beat up. She had a big old black eye, and she was bleeding from her side of her head and her mouth, you know, had all, and I didn't, okay. what had happened, and she wouldn't talk about it. She, they just brought her in, and, you know, my mother was wiping her, and she's crying, and what happened, what happened, and she would never say. And she had just gotten off the bus and was walking down the street. And from the bus, where she got off to 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 her home, it had happened. Really? Somehow. She got attacked. So it was one of your neighbors. It, it was or, somebody that she knew from, you know. So the, it could have been one of the, the members. Street. It could have been, you know, one of the KKK members coming through and That's assaulted terrible. her. I don't know. But she never talked about it. She just said, never mind, never mind. He said, well, we got to call the police, you know. No, 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 no. Just yeah. no, no. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And she never called the police. She just stayed quiet about it. And we never knew who did it. Terrible. So it could have been, yeah. you know. And, and maybe because she, she was walking down the sidewalk instead of walking in the middle of the street. Oh, I see. So yeah. she was on the sidewalk yeah. and not her designated right. area. Right. So that's that terrible to think that that's... So that's what I'm saying. Those kind of things happen. But again, people didn't talk about it much because... You know the control. You know the times, yeah. and um, still all it the way was up rough. Time. It all was the way, rough. all the way through the seventies. That's just insane to think, especially in this area. Right. Yeah, people don't know that that was going on back here. They really don't. And and then when some of the fam, the the sons, the kids started moving, they started moving to Rolinda. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard of uh, out by um, not in the Rio Linda direction, but out towards the Alberta direction. Alberta, they went to Alberta, but first they went. Some started going to Rio Linda, and then Rio Linda wasn't far enough, so then they went to Alberta, and then that was even further. So they'd go to Auburn, or you know, yeah. it's, it's almost like the you know, they just kept going, kept going, <laughs> Rockland, yeah. you know. And right. and folks, are, they're still around, some of them. Hello, everybody. This is Phil Lucero. And I'm Alexis Derevko. And this is the Cities of Blood podcast. And we need you to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can know about all of our content. And if you're fascinated with serial killers, conspiracies, crimes of all sorts, then this is the channel for you. 